Peterborough has a busy high street. And on the way down here, I counted five cash points. We don't think twice about using them anymore. They're everywhere and we use them all the time. So imagine if you found out that someone was stealing from your bank account, but instead of getting your money back, you were arrested and accused of fraud. Well, it happens. And according to the expert you're about to meet, it could happen to any of us. Millions of us shop and bank online, and just about all of us will use a cash machine at some point this week. Convenient, yes, but how safe is your hard-earned cash? Millions of pounds are taken by fraudsters every year, and you may be surprised to learn it could be you who pays when things go wrong. To find out how and why, I've come to Cambridge to meet a team of computer hackers. Breaking into security systems is what they do. Fortunately, they're not fraudsters. Over the past 15 years or so, banks have repeatedly claimed that their systems, card payment systems, online banking systems were secure. Um, again and again and again, we get people complaining, coming to us saying, well, I was the victim of fraud. The bank says I didn't, uh, uh, that I didn't take care of, but I did. Uh, and again and again, we've investigated these systems and we've found all sorts of loopholes, all sorts of design errors, all sorts of implementation blunders um, that allowed fraudsters to exploit people's accounts and steal their money. In the past, the team has proved weaknesses in cash machines and pin terminals. Now they've turned their attention to the latest online anti-fraud system. Banks are constantly trying to stay one step ahead, so some of them are giving their customers handheld card readers to use online. And what they do is they give you a unique code every time you use them. But now Saar and Steve are going to show me how they can break into even this system. All they need to do is get the customer's name, the unique PIN code and their account membership number. Now this customer knows what is happening, but if this was a real fraud, she would have no idea the chip and PIN terminal she's about to use has been rigged. While she's using it, her data is being collected on a laptop linked to the terminal. From that fake chip and pin terminal, we've collected the victim's name and we've also got one of these one-time codes which can be used for online banking. Now all we need is their membership number. So the membership number isn't something you have to protect particularly? No, it's not something that you're expected to protect. So I think it would be extremely plausible for a fraudster to call up the customer and say, this is your bank, um, we've seen you've made a transaction in this shop, did you really do it? That's fine. Can we get your membership number just to confirm who you are? And I think most customers will hand it out. And with those details, we can now log into the online banking and do as many transactions as we want. Okay, so, so you've got her surname. Mm -hmm. Steve well, now has the one-time code from the chip and pin terminal and the customer's bank membership number. And it works. I watch him log in and even transfer money out of her account. And that's us into the one name banking system. That's frightening. So that's that simple that you can get into her account or anybody's account through that process? Yes, and a fraudster could do this very easy, easily by hand. They could even automate it. Is this something that fraudsters are already jumping on and, and, and using as the next thing to trick people out of their money? I think fraudsters are probably already attacking systems using these card readers. We asked Barclays if they were worried by this and they told us they didn't believe this demonstration to be a plausible risk. They said their system is the strongest practical solution that has ever been available and is just part of a multi-layered security. Since its introduction, they say we have seen online fraud reduce dramatically. Fraud is still a huge problem. Figures just released show in the first half of this year, card fraud fell by 23%, but online banking losses rose by 55% to £39 million. Professor Anderson believes customers are now more liable than ever. The idea behind chip and pin was that you blame either the customer or the merchant if there is a dispute, depending on whether or not a pin was used. The problem is that if uh, the banks are guarding the system, but it's the merchants and the customers who are bearing the costs of fraud, 
then the banks aren't properly motivated to guard the system properly. And as a result, we have seen fraud really take off since the introduction of chip and pin. Customers are now paying an awful lot more. There was a recent Consumers Association study um, showed that something like 20% of uh, fraud victims end up out of pocket. These are just bank statements from... Jane Badger is one of them. She was working for the police in 2006 when she reported a fraudulent transaction of £772 on her egg credit card. She expected to get her money back, but she was in for a shock. What happened was recorded on her home security camera. A Wednesday morning, I'm sitting watching TV, children are in bed, and I recognise these people from work. I open the front door and they proceed to tell me that I'm being arrested for fraud by false representation. I was being arrested by my own work colleagues. Totally embarrassed. My neighbour actually came over and said to my husband um, a day or two later, we actually thought Jane had killed you. Officers turn up at my house. I'm led away. All these other cars pull up. All these officers get out, put gloves on. So they obviously thought I'd done something serious to Dave. Jane's house was searched. She was suspended from her job charged and taken to court. I couldn't go out, I couldn't do much at all, I was just thought, everybody thought I was guilty and that's the way I, I was telling myself, well if they're thinking that maybe I must be guilty, I know I'm not, but how can I prove that? I can't prove that, that I wasn't guilty. What was your darkest moment? My darkest moment I think was when I, I thought I can't take any more, I can't face anybody, everybody's talking about me. So I thought the best thing to do would to end my life. And you actually spent a long time thinking about it? I did that. spend a long time thinking about it, that, that it would only be my husband that would find me. It, it, the place I would do it, he could only see me. The children would definitely not be at home. So he, he would find me and only him. And he, he knows how desperate I've been because he's been there throughout it. He's been there when I've not slept, when I've sat up and talked him and talked and talked. It took over our life. Luckily, Jane heard about Professor Anderson. With his expert help, the case against her collapsed and she was acquitted. She and husband Dave have come to Cambridge to thank him. Hi. Hello. I've got so much to thank you for, I really have. Yes. Grab a seat. Thank you. And that's just um, a little gift off, um, off Dave and myself. We oh, hoped to give it you some time ago, but we've only just got round to bring it over to you. Yes, it's been very traumatic. Um, well, mm. I just can't really put into words exactly how bad it has been. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I know I've got you to thank for, for everything because nobody else wanted to help me. Nobody. The payments industry says the banking code gives enough protection, but Professor Anderson believes the law needs strengthening. I believe that what the UK needs to do is to follow the American lead. There, Regulation E, which governs electronic banking, places the burden of proof squarely on the bank. So unless the bank has got direct physical evidence that you actually did that transaction, say an ATM camera photograph, they will give you your money back. I did send him a copy of my history. Jane went back to her job with the police but she still wants to clear her name. She's never had a reply from Egg to any of her letters. We asked them to explain, but they declined. What would you like to say to the chief executive of Egg? I'm not bothered about money. I don't want compensation. I don't, you know, even if they didn't give my money back, I'm not that interested in the money side of things. I want an apology. I want them to go out there and say, actually, we did get it wrong, Jane, and we are sorry.